Hello, good day, everyone. I hope everyone can see and hear me. My name is Lydia Lilichenko. I'm an account executive within LSDA, and I'm very, very uh, glad to um, meet you all today and that you are together with us on our uh, webinar called Greenpeace and LSDA, A Road to Sustainable Future with the Space Tech. So I'm going to present you to our all key speakers who's going to be today with us. So it's first of all, it's me. So I'm an account executive within LSDA. I work with global markets and we're all trying here to make the world a better place. And so I would like you to introduce you to our um, guest today. So it's Wu Hao, a senior researcher at Greenpeace East Asia. Wu Hao, can you say hi? Hi everyone, I'm Wu Hao, I'm the Senior Researcher for Greenpeace East Asia. I'm very glad to be here with EOSDA to share some use case we have done before. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very excited to have you on board today. Um, the next is going to be my colleague Victoria Trayan. She's a Land Viewer Product Manager at LSDA. Hi, Victoria. Hello to everyone. I'm really glad to see you all here in our webinar. As Lydia said, I'm a product manager of our land viewer, and I'm going to guide you through the platform for you to understand how you can deal with your tasks using land viewer. Perfect. Thank you, Victoria. And also here with us today is Viera Petrik, our chief marketing officer. Hi, Hello. Viera. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm there, Patrick. I'm passionate about marketing. I'm also a lifelong eco activist and a big fan of Greenpeace. So it's a very big day for me to be among the speakers with our Wuhao senior researchers from Greenpeace. Hope it's going to be a blast. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vera. So, what are we going to do today? What's expecting us? Let me guide you through our agenda first. So, of course, we will start with some introduction to get you a bit more about our journey and how we're tackling the global changes with satellite data. And we're going to be uh, then passing over the word to uh, Wuhao. So, Greenpeace, addressing the environmental risks from the climate change and the use case on which we've been working together. Then uh, we will be um, having a word with Victoria about the LSDA Land Viewer, so one of the platforms of LSDA, and how we're leveraging space tech for environmental solutions. And also, Vera will tell us more about the LSDA commitment to sustainability and our stories of impact. Also, um, to get to know a bit more about the LSDA out Academic Outreach Program. And then I will be wrapping up with um, information on the EOSAP, so first uh, commercial satellite constellation among remote sensing companies and what it's doing. And then we will be finishing up with a session of um, questions from your side, of course, because we want um, this webinar to be as much interactive and informative as it's possible. So welcome on board. And let me tell you a bit more about who we are. So um, LSDA is a privately held company. Uh, we own our three out of box products based on satellite data. So those are the crop monitoring for the monitoring of the health of the plants on the land. That as well, the land viewer, so the star of today uh, for the high resolution imagery and forest monitoring. So derived from the name, uh, basically to concentrate on various reforestation uh, questions. And we were born in the United States. Our headquarter is located in California. And we do have a research center in Eastern Europe as well. And the team of ours is pretty big and is growing. So we have 200 employees and um, we're covering, let's say, a full cycle of various activities because we do work on the elaboration and on the um, support of the platforms that we are owning. And as well, we're uh, very uh, precise about uh, the research and development because we have the whole group of engineers and scientists led by five 
professors and 15 PhDs to, um, yeah, indeed to make the world a better place. And this helps us to partner with governmental, commercial and scientific organizations then to provide various solutions and software uh, for business, science, educational purposes and um, using, of course, the uh, Earth observing data. Uh, let me also bring you through the timeline uh regarding of our journey and how we actually end up in here and talking to you today so our journey started uh much much earlier so in 2015 basically when uh EOSDA was founded by max polakov and since then we were formulating our vision our mission and how we would like to work with the data and so then we have started launching our platforms and the first one is actually the land viewer about which we're going to be talking today so on the real on the fly real-time earth observation imagery processing and analytics service and then it was followed by our a crop monitoring platform so a crafted solution crafted ready to go solution that helps to monitor the uh, field activity data to understand what's happening in the near real time with your field and your crops and as well in a historical perspective and then create basically a platform for communication and uh, improvement of your practices on the field and so moving there from 2017 up to 2022 we were also implementing some extra let's say uh activities such as our custom solutions so it's a uh, unique uh, deep learning artificial intelligence based models crafted by our scientists that then in the end um helps us to understand how to um, enhance our yield within the yield prediction and modeling. What is growing on the fields within the classification of the crops and field boundaries detection? Uh, we also work a lot with soil moisture to understand how we can enhance the practices within the irrigation and much more. So uh, moving then after that, wait, um, so like the last things that we were coming up to with the idea is basically to well, when we realized that sometimes the information that we were having in this position was not enough, we realized that we are mature to be able to, well, become a bit even more independent in terms of the hardware as well. And uh, the absolutely revolutionary uh, thing has happened in uh, January 2023 because we have successfully launched our first on uh, satellite, EOSAT-1, and we are thriving actually to uh, compile an EOSAT constellation that's going to be 100% agro-focused. So I'm going to be stopping in here because I'm passing my word to Wu Hao, the senior researcher uh, from Greenpeace East Asia, to talk more about actually the use case with LSDA Land Viewer. Thank you, Wu Hao. Thanks a lot, Lydia. Uh, hello again, I'm Wu Hao, the senior researcher from Greenpeace East Asia. And uh, I'm, <coughs> as the Element Protection Organization, Greenpeace has to use the uh, remote sensing to deal with a lot of uh, element uh, related issues, such as illegal logging, such as the illegal mining in last decades. But right now, uh, because the uh, climate change, the, it induced climate risk such as the flood and the uh, white fire become more intense and frequent. So we are now we are trying also to use the remote sensing to deal with such problems. Here is two use cases we have done in the last two years, which have uh, worked with the land viewer to try to solve the problem or try to analyze the situation. So the first one is the first fire in Korea on March 2022. There's a big, a very big uh, and major first fire broke out in Eugene, South Korea. And uh, the most important thing here is the wildfire fire is quite, clear, uh, quite near the uh, one of the uh, nuclear power plant in Korea. So we are worried about what's the situation we are going on because it's uncontrolled at that time. And the other case is the flood in Hulan, China in July, on July 20, 
2021, and it's the very high ring will uh, will lead the uh, the the, the record breaking high ring will lead a very massive flood at that time, and uh, it caused around 400 deaths and uh, also about uh, 14 million people are impacted due to the flood. Uh, normally, we know, as we all know, the remote sensing is the best way to know the ground situation uh, in the first time. Uh, and uh, that's the, maybe the first hand information that we need to answer or respond to the end risk. But the problem is the uh, old process uh, because there are a lot of different uh, data from different data sources, such as the two. Co most commonly used data source, the Landsat and the Sentinel. We must go to the NASA website to download the Landsat uh, to search. Uh, uh, we must go to the NASA website for the Landsat and go to the ESA website for the Sentinel. And the whole process, including the searching and uh, also the downloading and the processing, is actually takes a lot of time. Uh, exactly when you at the location with the network is not very good uh, and also you need to uh, you need professional software such as NB, the ArcGIS to deal with to 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 process the data so uh, next slide please but in another viewer actually it combine a lot of function together and make it very simple so here, the following is my most commonly used features uh, at uh, on that viewer. Uh, if everything is fine, if the image is is good, the quality of the image is good. Actually, we can down the such uh, uh, features uh, in maybe in less than half hour or less. Uh, maybe some for some cases I can say less than twenty minutes. So that's actually it saves us a lot of time and sometimes the time uh, can save lives. The first function I actually use to is to find out the latest image. So it's very convenient to see the detailed cloud cover uh, of the image. Is that okay or not for our analysis? And then we can change the band combination. Uh, and because for, uh, for the natural color, sometimes we cannot see uh, very clearly for the objective we want to find, such as the fail and the, such as the flood. And after that, we can do some before and uh, after analysis uh, to see how how the impact of the natural disaster. And then if we want to have a detailed number of the, of the impact areas, so uh, we can do the change detection, use different uh, index to calculate the draft uh, impact area. And then if we want to publish the image to the our viewers, uh, to the audience or to the media, we can use the story function to build a very simple but uh, quick story and show them to to them, uh, to the to our audience. And then if you want to have further analysis, you can download in the data and uh, import them into your professional software. So here I want to go more deeper for these two cases. The first one is the first fire monitoring during the fire. As we can see, uh, it actually is a central two data. So at the east coast uh, on, the, on the top, Right is the nuclear power plant near the coast, and uh, for the natural color, there there is a lot of smoke, so it's a little bit difficult to see where the uh, fire goes, where and where is the burnt areas, how large the burnt area it is. So here we can change our uh, band combination to the uh, uh, short infrared uh, two and short infrared run one and red and red so this is this combination is the best to penetrate the smoke 
So we can see the huge difference between the natural color and the first color. So with the first color image, we can see the actual details, the fire lines, where the fire goes, and the burnt areas. Uh, from this image, we have a draft idea that is the fire is go to the west and go to the uh, south. So the nuclear power plant is safe at that time. Uh, and then, uh, if we want to have more detailed numbers about how large the burnt area is, we can use the change uh, detection function to do the aftermath, after fail. And uh, here we just choose one image which before fail and the other one is after fail. And uh, we just do uh, that the system automatically calculate the NDVI difference here. So the number from the land viewer is around 200 square kilometers. Actually, it's quite fit for the, for the, for the, uh, uh, if we compare to the news report, it's almost fit. It's, uh, it's also 200 square kilometers in the news report. And uh, this function is very simple to use. So you just only to need to choose the before and after and the system will automatically uh, calculate for you and it's just take maybe two or three minutes so uh, you don't need to import download and import the data to the to the mv or to the rgs to do such uh, complicated process yeah and then if we want to show the our the image to the public you can uh, you can also use the story function, and uh, that I think that is the quickest way to make the our audience understand what is happening. So you just choose the image from different time and uh, choose the banner combination you want to show, and then the system will automatically uh, generate uh, a, a GIF or video. You can save it. Uh, and download it and send to the to the uh, to the audience. And also, you can uh, uh, share them on the so uh, social media such as the Facebook and Twitch. Yes. And then here's other case uh, I would like to share is the uh, fraud monitoring. The other advantage for the viewer, I think, is it, it just combine the optical and the radar sensor together. So during the flood, the clouds is always the biggest challenge for our observation because uh, the flood is caused by the rain and rain is caused, uh, is bring, uh, was bringed by the clouds. And uh, in this case, I think the cloud situation is somehow is fine, but in other, uh, other case, there will be heavy, heavy clouds which we cannot see the ground uh, anymore in a short period. So here, then we will just combine the central one, central two together. So with the radar data, we can see actually very clear where uh, uh, the, the detail location of the uh, flood areas and uh, it didn't impact by the clouds uh, anymore. And then, uh, if you want to have a uh, more idea or more information about the how big uh, the flood it is in a long time of period, so we can use the time series analysis. Uh, we can choose the index as the NDWI normalized difference water index, uh, and the draw uh, AOI. Uh, uh, for your analysis, and uh, after the conversion of the system, you can see there's a lot of image are used to analyze the uh, water uh, coverage in this AOI, and uh, the peak in 2021 is quite clearly and obviously in this table. And uh, also, you can download this figure and the uh, also the table to f further analysis. And the also, uh, it's it's very easy to see from this table that how big the flood at that time uh, is almost triple or, or even more uh, 
flood areas compared to the normal year. Uh, and uh, at the end, actually, is the band, uh, the 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 uh, land view also provide the pos uh, uh, pos possibility to for the long term impact analysis for the agriculture. So here, the left image is uh, the Sentinel two data from last month, and the right one is the. Uh, image which uh, before the flood. So we changed the both uh, image to the ag uh, agricultural band accumulation. So that's the band accumulation. We can see uh, the, uh, the core has uh, for, the, for the analysis. So from this comparison, we can see even after two years, this huge, the massive flood is impact the areas a lot. There's still a lot of areas I have the water and become a lake somehow. And uh, for some crops, even they didn't uh, under the water, but due to the floods, it cannot be farmed anymore. So it's a very good case to show how big the climate change induced uh, natural disaster will impact our lives. Okay, so thanks. That's all for, for my presentation, and uh, it's time for Victoria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was really nice cases. Uh, from my side, I will talk a bit um, about uh, the um, land viewer product in general, and then I'm going to share my screen to show you how it's going to happen in life and to, to illustrate how you can uh, you go uh, with the same use cases that um, were similar use cases that uh, Wu shared from his side. So uh, what I want to start with, um, in the business world of today, profitability and sustainability go hand in hand. And with this in mind, EOS Data Analytics puts its tech expertise to support the core mission of leveraging modern space technologies for well-being of the Earth. Uh, EOS The Land Viewer is one of the most demanded platforms for Earth observation from our toolbox. It's a satellite imagery analytics and observation tool that offers from low to high and even very high resolution satellite images from multiple providers. We already have 26 satellites incorporated into the platform, including nine high resolution satellites. And we are working hard to expand our portfolio. And we are now in progress of adding six more high resolution satellite um, sources with resolution up to 30 centimeters, which allows you to identify even small objects. Uh, LandViewer allows on the fly searching, visualizing, and processing of the data by applying more than 20 indices and band presets, which are already available on the platform. You're also able to add your custom indices or bands to analyze uh, and get insights to deal with your real business issues. Um, we also have in time change detection, uh, which is really easy to use just by contrasting several images of the same area of interest captured by various satellites at a distinct date and time. Time series analysis is a powerful tool, as you already saw from the use case uh, of Wuhan, um, for identifying patterns and trends in the past, as well as forecasting the future values. Um, easy showcasing the outcomes as a time lapse animation to share in social media, to add to articles, researchers, and other sources where you need it. You're also able to download the image itself with metadata with band combinations if you want to put it to uh, some spe specific professional tools like Argus and QGIS to analyze it there more deeply. Or you can share it via VMS to save your time and to save the device storage capacity. Um, then we can move on. Uh, to the list of the features we have in Viewer, I already, next slide please, I already um, 
yeah, mentioned some of them. Here is the set of the features we have in Land Viewer. You see that there are a lot of them actually. And it is the time when I'm going to share my screen and to show you uh, in life how it looks like in the product and how you're gonna uh, deal with, with your... <clears throat> I can share my screen because it says that somebody is sharing the screen. Yeah, thank you. Uh huh. I hope you see my screen now. Just a sec. I will move this higher, not to interfere in our uh, in our presentation. Yeah. So here, here is the main view of the product. It's what you actually see when you enter the product. You see the map with your location. Uh, you see the map tools here, usual map tools like zooming in, zooming out. You see the search where you can input your location if you need. Um, and here you see the panel with, with the features we have in the product, which you can switch switch between. Um, and here is the panel with the uh, satellite imagery, like I would say the main, the main um, and the core part of, of the product because you, you would need to use the satellite image to move forward with your analysis. So um, in order to get the right imagery, uh, you should um, draw or upload your AI area of interest. I have already drawn the one here. It's somewhere in Spain. Um, you can easily do it here. So you can do it like this. Um, I will I will return to 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 to, to mine. <laughs> yeah. So you can easily do it like this. So here you can like put a square, or you can like do it like this. Just put a point or something like this. You can draw the round if you have the round fill, for example. Um, here is um, the measurement tool if you need to measure the distance and you can like uh, uh, close it and see the area as well. Yeah, and here is actually the identify facility, the coordinates, the altitude, and if you're um, browsing the um, the imager already and applied some bands, you will see the band uh, um the band figure here as well yeah so i don't need it i will just remove it uh here you can switch between uh the types of the base maps the map i'm seeing now the terrain uh where you can see the altitudes uh, and the satellite data and you can switch off switch on labels um the sharing uh, I was talking about and two features I will I will talk about later 3D visualization and time series analysis. Yeah, so I will go to to the menu with all my saved all AIs and I will choose the last one I was talking about to present you the other features. Yeah, so here we see the satellite imagery for for this uh, area. You can just click on it to preview the the image uh, on the map up oh, sometimes it just takes a sec yeah you can see that the the image is much larger <laughs> than, than actually my ai so i will come closer to my ai it takes a bit of time yet to, to make it more detailed you can see uh, some nice uh, fields here including the, uh, the circular one and you're able to as i mentioned to draw the circular if you need it yeah, so uh, we also have the settings here. Um, you can choose the group of the sensors. You can see that there are a lot of them, including high resolution imagery. You can just enter the dates you need, the, the uh, starting and ending date. You can play with the cloudiness by just like moving this um, um, toggle here. Um, the sun elevation that you need, uh, you can switch on the toggle for covering the whole um, AUI if you need it. And you can choose um, between sensors. If you need a specific one, you can click like this, for example, to have on the Sentinel images here. Or, or you can return them back by just uh, clicking all sensors here. 
so it's it's pretty easy clear nothing nothing specific and from the card here you can see the preview of the imagery the date when it was taken the source sun elevation cloudiness and like the the name of the tile um i will go to high resolution imagery it's very interesting and useful part of the product you can see that there are a lot of them the process is seems uh, is quite similar in terms of viewing the image so you can just turn on the preview i would like to remind that you are viewing the preview of the image now so it's not the real quality that you will get in the end i will show you the real quality we we have uh, for the images uh in, in a sec uh so the, the process here is clear so you add in you're adding the to the image to cart you go in cart and you just submit the order i have a lot of here so yeah that's that's why that's the price here uh, a bit higher yes yeah, so you can see 20 uh, 250 bucks and then you're just like some bit submitting the order you're like just filling the details of your cart and you and the order is sent and you get uh, your uh, imagery in maximum two business days yeah so it's really it's really fast yeah and i'm going to show i will switch back to, to regular uh imagery here and i will show you the um, uh how the higher resolution imagery looks like actually uh here is a comparison for you to understand the difference between the resolution uh, the 10 meter resolution uh it's the usual one uh it's uh sentinel 2 for example resolution it's used for assessing high um, large land areas um, this is the one meter resolution. You can see it's much, much better uh, in terms of quality and much more detailed uh, uh, compared to uh, ten, 10 meter and uh, 30 centimeters, for example, which we're going to have on the platform at the end of this year. It's much, much more detailed and clear. And then we move on to um to our samples image samples here is the bagamas island and i'm sure you never saw the bagamas in such a view from the satellite and you can see it's really nice and beautiful and unless you own a helicopter or rent a helicopter where you can go to space uh, which is not very common at the moment you will never see bahamas like this so you can even plan your traveling uh using the satellite imagery not only use it for your like uh, professional purposes but for your uh, regular life as well it's uh, 75 uh, centimeters resolution from gs2 the next one um it's actually barcelona it's also 75 centimeters resolution i will go to details a bit the google is not allowing me to like to, to, to zoom in too much but you already see that um there are actually um se separate um houses and squares are seen here and the barcelona looks very nice from this view um, here's the example of the airport it's beijing capital uh, airport yeah it, it's uh, it now becomes more detailed it's a uh, 50 centimeter resolution and you can see that you clearly can identify the the planes and the uh, the other vehicles and you have you can identify these uh, green areas these uh, buildings here so it's it's really really detailed and clear yeah you can not only um like view um, the urban areas or the islands you can also monitor the natural disaster happening from using a high resolution imagery here you can see um, the uh, volcanic eruption you you can see this road of lava which is going to the sea and here is actually the center of the um, eruption uh it was happening in spain so you can use uh, high resolution imagery to uh, monitor how how the natural disaster is going what is happening yeah and you can see it in real really good details if you need it 
Here is the example of the Great Barrier Reef, Barrier Reef from Australia, and I bet that uh, you will not be, if you go to Australia, you, you will see uh, the Barrier Reef uh, <laughs> in a different angle. And from the satellite, you can see how beautiful it is, uh, like on from the helicopter, you would say, from a satellite, not helicopter yet, but still. Yeah, here is the, another example of the city for you just to see that you can uh, identify clearly the buildings, the containers here in the port, the boats, the vehicles. Again, you can you will be able uh, to zoom more here, but Google is not allowing me to do so. But still, you can see that it's very, very detailed. It's very good resolution for you to understand uh, if you need to, for example, to count the vehicles or to monitor like the process of um, um, putting the um, this um, okay <laughs> so just packing the boat yeah with the containers so um, you will be able to do so yeah very nice and very detailed again and the last one i think not the last one uh, almost the last one mm. Yeah, it's uh, also I wanted to show some green areas to you that you will be able to identify like different trees. Even here, you can see that you can identify the bushes and trees. It's the example of the Versailles um, in Paris, Versailles Palace. Um, yeah, so it's very, very, very nice here. You can see the um, these curves here. People done a lot of work to make it so beautiful. Yeah, so uh, if we are talking about some forest areas where it fills, you will be able to see a lot of details. It's actually 50 centimeters resolution here, example. And the last example, it's the St World Cup Stadium in Qatar. It's also 50 centimeters resolution. And it's another nice example that you will be able to see from from space, yeah, from the satellite, from the helicopter view, um, <clears throat> the details here, it's the stadium actually, um, the building, you can see that even you can assess even the building high here. Yeah, so really, really nice. I can talk about high resolution imagery a lot, but I <laughs> we don't have that much time and I will return uh, to our platform. Yeah, so another, I will briefly go through um, the other features we have in the platform, we already told about some of them. I will not step, stop much. Uh, they are in, in the end of my presentation. I will show the use case that shocked me recently. So I really want to share it with you. Yeah. So I already showed you this one, the high resolution imagery, the bands. Um, as I already said, we have more than 20 bands. You can see that there are a lot of them. Uh, we showed already how they use some of them. I will, I will talk later about my case using the bands. Here is the example where you can uh, put your band. You can, yeah, you can choose the palette here. You can see that there are a lot of them actually. Um, you, you can put levels here, you can change the amount of classes here and you, you can input the formula you need and just they just saved, yeah. So you, you go back and you already have it here. I will switch back to natural color, yeah. Um, the, the change detection feature we was already talking about, I will come back to it a bit later with my use case. Um, then the clustering feature, which is uh, widely used for um, assessing the productivity of the map. I will show it really, really fast. I will try to show it fast. It's based on, you can base it on some of presetted band combinations here. I've chosen NDVI here. Yeah, and you can see the um, the area was divided into classes and you can see the area of the different classes. You can switch between percentage uh, uh, square meters or hectares, which is more preferable to you. Um, and actually the, the preview, it's the preview of the um, um, of the clustering of the zoning of this area. It takes a bit of time to calculate me metrics, so uh, to make it like more I, I will try, I think we, we have time here uh, to show you the, how it will change from, from this view that we already have. You can change the opacity here if you need it more. 
more bright or less. Yeah, you can see that it became much, much rough uh, comparing to uh, to the preview. And here, when it will be loaded, it again takes a bit of time uh, to. It, it will show the the min uh, min index uh, here, the minimum, the maximum, the class ID, the area. So a lot of um, useful information here. Yeah, I will just go back to the rest. Uh, the time series analysis, we showed um, a really nice use case uh, with the uh, time series analysis. You can base it on uh, three index at the moment. Um, you can choose the sensor or choose, choose all of them. You can uh, choose the period from one once to 10 years, or you can customize it by yourself as you need it. You can split it to years. You can then um, download the table with the, with the figures. You can download the image here. Yeah, I will not stop much just to save your time here. Uh, yeah, the stories, I will show you just briefly how the menu looks like. Um, uh, it's, it's the feature that will help you to share uh, your your findings here. Uh, we also showed you the uh, the outcome, how it looks like. Um, you can use it easily. Just choose the picture you want. You click create the stories, and you will come to you uh, to the menu where you have the whole video, and you can just uh, uh, change whatever you want there. Change the order. Change uh, sorted by dates, or like uh, to uh, change it from. And DVI uh, from natural view to NDVI or any other band. So yeah, really, really nice possibilities here with this feature. Yeah, so I'm turning it off. Uh, yeah, you can download, as I said uh, at the beginning of my speech, that you are able to download the image. Uh, you can download the image itself. You can crop it if you need it. Uh, you can download the bands all together uh, or different ones. You can, uh, yeah, choose the indexes if you need the indices information there. So um, you are able to download it and use it in uh, some uh, professional tools if you need it. And another thing I wanted to mention here, one really cool thing, that you can subscribe uh, to new scenes for your area of interest, and you will be notified um, if you ha if we have new each time we have new. Uh, imagery uh, for your area of interest, so you will be able to track instantly what is happening on your area. Yeah, so I will go to the case. It's It will be the last part of my speech today. Um, this case really shocked me. I will switch to another AI to show it. Um, it happened in Amazonia on the Lake TC. Uh, the temperature grew really, really high here, and uh, in the uh, in the lake it was around 40 degrees, and uh, hundreds of dolphins just died because of it. And we were uh, so shocked by this case, so we wanted to find the evidence how we can show it, how we can, yeah, express this problem to more wider auditorium using the satellite imagery. And that's how we can do it. I will be using, this event uh, happened around 20th of September. I will be using the Landsat uh, imagery here because it has thermal band and that's what we need. So I will choose the first imagery, it's 22nd. It's actually after the event was ha uh, happened on the 20th of September. And I will go to the change detection feature and I will choose um, the picture in the beginning of September, and you will be able to see the difference even by the natural view, and then I will show you with the band's application. Yeah, so here you can see the dates, uh, 22nd of September and 20, or sorry, um, 6th of September. And here is like this comparison slider, which and like you can move like this. And you can see that on the 6th of September, there was actually a normal blue lake. And that's what happened with the lake on the 22nd of September. And I will apply bands. I will use a uh, thermal infrared band. I will apply it to both pictures uh, to show you the difference uh, between, uh, between the 
uh, surface temperature here. Uh, the brighter before uh, while it's loading, I will say that uh, the brighter uh, pixels are showing the higher temperature. So you you can see that it was like a normal normal lake here, and that's what happened with the lake now. So you can see this really really bright uh, pixels here, and we were thinking: is there any other way um, we can prove that the problem was happening there? And we were thinking that. Uh, while the temperature is getting high in the lake rivers, it's usually um, the um, the lake is usually blooming, yeah. And uh, we can use some vegetation index, for example, even regular NDVI, uh, to show that something happened in terms of blooming blooming here. And again, I will apply to both pictures so that you can see the difference. Yeah, so uh, on the first picture at the beginning of September, you can see that the lake is marked as red and it's normal for like in DVI, water is marked as red, is as red usually. And uh, here on the 22nd of uh, September, you see that a uh, great part of a lake where a stream is not going, it's actually the stream, you see how, how it looks like. Uh, the, the rest of the lake was started blooming actually here, so you can see the difference. It was really a shocking case uh, to me, and we are um, actually writing a, a, a case uh, to our blog at the moment about it, so you will be able to, to see it a bit later when we release it. I think I'm done for, for now. So I will stop my end of my screen sharing. It was a really, really nice opportunity for me to talk about the land viewer, and I will pass my word to Vera, where you are welcome. Hello, I'm here. Uh, thank you so much, Victoria. Yes, we are currently working on a, a stories of impact about the dolphins. It's a big investigation, so we'll come back later. I think it will be ready in a month or so. So I'm going to talk from the marketing and PR perspective. Who, who does use... Uh, land viewer. So our target audience is quite wide. I will tell you why, because land viewer was our first product on our portfolio. That's why we kept in mind all of our interested industry in one product. So who they are? Those are agricultural players, all of them, from farmers to insurers, input suppliers, and IT companies who work with the agriculture. They can detect crop health, stress, and growth patterns, winter plant moisture content, all of it. Then we, of course, work with the forestry professionals who track the forest health, changes in forest cover, detect deforestation and uh, forest fires. Um, and of course, this product was uh, created with uh, our scientists in mind. So independent scientists or not independent scientists and GIS researchers uh, are our main target audience, I would say, because they can create detailed maps of the Earth's surface. And again, they can cover all of the problems that they need, starting with agriculture and ending with environmental problems. And uh, of course, the env environmental monitoring professionals are the ones who help us follow our vision and detect the problems that actually happen, unfortunately, from time to time with the forest being on fires and flooding and so on and so forth. And I'm happy to say that uh, for by now we have over 960,000 users from almost every country in the world. So as you probably understand, you can uh, access our land viewer from any country in the world. What you need is a laptop and some internet connection. So to tell you how we, um, how is it all combined with the sustainability? So. Uh, Mm, we created our mission and vision uh, like any other company, but we are very much interested in preserving this planet. And so our mission is easy. We want to give businesses the accurate data to, uh, so they can make um, accurate decisions using satellite tech. But our vision, as I usually say, our dream is to use this technology to preserve the blue dot we are living 
And uh, to tell you how we do it, all of our products and services, everything that we do, our great science team does, uh, is aligned with the 10 out of 17 United Nations Sustainability Goals. So every, all of the products, uh, while we are creating them, all, all of the new features, we try uh, to stay aligned with the Sustainability Goals. And not to uh, tell you that it's only the products, marketing team and PR team are very committed to sustainability. And so to do our part in this, we've created a so-called stories of impact. The one that Victoria talked about, the dolphins, that will be the next one. Uh, so uh, this is my favorite case. It's the story about the chat community uh, that were scarce on resources. And because of the climate change, people just started moving to the place where the grass is greener. So my favorite, I would say for now, colleague, uh, Indu Ibrahim, uh, reached out to us so we could create a 3D map of the territory, indicating the green places, the water places, and uh, this way we could actually help them. Let's please watch videos, just one minute. see that was the case where uh, some uh, people reached out to us and I'm uh, actually very happy to say that one year later right now we talked to Hindu and we know that the area is out of the compromise so for now they live peacefully and our map really helped which is the fantastic news I, I think for everyone who is uh, thinking about this planet. So uh, I won't spend much of your time this is the last slide for me. I want to say to again to reach out to all the scientists, students, independent researchers, all of you guys, if you are sharing our vision to use space technology to preserve uh, our Earth, we give free access to our products as well as land viewer. What you need to do is to uh, apply to academic outreach program which is on our site and after a short interview we'll be uh, hopefully we'll share the access and work on some amazing cases together. That's it from my side. I think Lydia will start the survey now. Thank you. Hello, hello. Here I am back with you. Um, just turning my camera on. Hello there. So as I promised earlier, um, our webinar is also here today to be a bit um, interactive. So right now there is a time for the survey. I would uh, really glad if you could um, just uh, participate. So basically it's a really easy thing to do. Uh, you need just to um, go through the questions that we're having right now. So the first question is, how frequently do you use satellite imagery for your land observation needs? This is a single choice type question. So it's not gonna be very complicated, but definitely your answers will help us a lot and um, looking forward to receive them. Uh, 
Okay, and yeah, I'm just going to move down uh, with the, the questions that you're having. So you will be seeing them um, in front of you. Uh, can I explain the question three? Uh, just give me one second, I will get there. Are you familiar with EOSDA Land Viewer products? Well, it's also easy one. So let's see what you were having as a question in three. Have you or your com company encountered the need for revising or obtaining new satellite data in the past? Well, um, yeah, that is the question. Basically, have you ever, well, first of all, used the satellite imagery before? And um, was there any need, let's say, to um, get the information from the satellite? As far as I understand that, I hope it's a bit um, clarified the question for you. So have you have ever actually encountered the need to um, obtain the satellite data or revise, meaning that you were probably having some data earlier before, but uh, maybe you would have had the need to, you know, rework on that. Uh, the question number four is, what features or functionalities are most important to you when using the satellite imagery platform? So, also pretty easy. Are you more interested in old or new satellite imagery? It's actually a really good question because um, that really depends on the scope of um, the project of yours on which you're working. So there is just six questions. So the last but not the least, is there any specific information missing that you or your company would like to know? And please type in your answer. This is a kind of a vast uh, in terms of the question, but, um, but let's see what you have to say. So um, let's give it a bit of a more of the time. So like this, we'll be able to I need you to, you know, to be more active in here. So, and also, of course, uh, not just us posing the questions to you, but uh, please feel free to uh, pose your questions to us in the chat as well. So later on, we'll be having the Q&A session. So, um, yeah. Oh, it's going well. We have the response rate of already almost 40%. And let's see. So just six questions, pretty easy because there's just, you know, a couple of, a couple of more minutes. Let's try to make it A little bit more. Let's try to be a bit more active, guys. And then there will be almost the end because I will need to present as well in a couple of words about the um, EOSAT. So. Okay, so I can see that I'm a sociologist <laughs> as my uh, background experience. So I can see that we have reached uh, the half of the response rate, which is more than 50%, which is good. So we will be wrapping up our um, survey session. So perfect. And here, just, you know, the final words, but about the very very, to be honest, important topic. It's basically the way how we are trying to get a bit more independency in terms of the satellite data. So uh, to work with the, our own proper um, constellation. So the first one, the EOSAT is the world's first solely agri-focused, this is a very important detail, satellite constellation among remote sensing uh, companies. So um, I would just like to add a couple of words about the constellation itself. So as I said, it's the first ever satellite that are specialized solely on agricultures. And uh, this is uh, determined basically by the what's inside of the satellite. So those are uh, 13 dedicated bands that can reveal the information on the field with a much more higher accuracy than any, let's say, satellite that are being used for the agri-purposes right now. 
So our goal is to launch seven optical satellites and uh, they are all sun synchronous and um, or a bit so like within the five, six day revisit time to cover all the agriculture regions all over the whole world. And our goal, our final and ultimate goal is actually not the ultimate, but one of the final ones is to receive uh, the revisit time of 24 hours every single day on the tasking. It's meaning that you will be able to receive the information about the what's happening on the field or in your forest within a 24 hour response. So actually this idea, it started in 2020. So we were, you know, um, designing and trying to understand how we should approach this. So of course, the years of testing and the years of experimentation about the flight and operations, the readiness reviews once again and once again. And in 2023 and 3rd of January, actually we were uh, together with my um teammates we were observing actually the launching uh online uh, from um yeah from the united states and so it was a pretty exciting moment for us right now the aosat one is being successfully on the leo orbit it's uh, taking the its pictures it's been adjusting and definitely in case you would like to know more about how to um get that imagery and uh, to be on board with us just don't hesitate to contact us in the future so in the near real future we're expecting to launch the next uh, six satellites and yeah to obtain the maximum of the capacity about that so moving next yeah um a bit more of the words so this is how the eosat is actually looking it's a really nice uh cube basically um and uh, the proper the a proprietary is a high quality imagery and so it works with the the stations that are located on the land so it's receiving and it's also uh processing so it basically give us the information and so it's been governed by the team of our skilled space scientists and engineers who are being with him like pretty much 24 hours per seven and uh yeah basically it's about the teamwork most of all so the team of uh specialists from the r d data engineers and agronomists and uh, developers are uh, working all together to receive as an outcome the high quality and accurate business insights so join us on this and um yeah Basically, that was it from my side as well. Right now, I think that we can move to the Q&A session. So let me just super briefly see what's in here just to not to miss uh, your questions. So let me start. Um, OK, so there was a question. Can images, maps generated on the platform be published under Creative Commons 4.0? Not really sure what's meant under Creative Commons 4.0. Um, but definitely, I think, so the half of the questions, the which ones are like pretty much not very clear, I think that we can gather them and we can also answer them if not straight away, but then definitely after the, um, after the session um okay there's another one uh let me check it's kind of complicated as a process to monitor the q a oh uh there was a question to how so uh in your opinion what are the biggest environmental challenges currently facing us the one that you saw by your own using land viewer well, how I think that's that's for you. Can you can you please elaborate on that? Uh, thanks a lot. That's a very good question. From my point of view, I think right now the most <coughs> critical issues for the elemental protection is the climate change. So, as we can see in East Asia regions, more and more natural disasters, such as the wildfire, such as the flood, such as the typhoon. Uh, and the second disaster after this natural disaster are actually more and more intense and uh, frequent in last, I think, five years. And uh, compared to the illegal logging or mining or 
the plastic issues. Actually, this natural disaster will impact more, actually a lot, uh, more, a lot more people in this region. And uh, for some, especially some region did have very uh, uh, good economy, uh, economic uh, situation. So this is the thing we are facing right now. And uh, also we were at the Greenpeace will uh, pay more and more attention on this field to respond to the natural, uh, the climate change uh, induced natural disaster. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Hao, for this insight. Um, there is another question. Uh, supposing we had a situation in one of our fields in a remote area, can the platform provide a real-time image for assessment? If yes, how and what do we have to provide to produce the needed result? Um, not sure. Uh, maybe uh, Victoria can maybe help me with this one. Yeah, hi, sure. I, I can answer the question. It's it's really simple. <laughs> yeah, uh, so if you had some um, bad situation uh, in some remote area of your fields, you are able to uh, get the imagery both publicly available like Sentinel-2 or Landsat imagery on the platform. Um, Sentinel-2 is updated every five days, as if, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, for the, uh, as for the high resolution imagery, you are able to uh, look to upload your AI to the platform and just uh, look through the archive imagery uh, we have for this particular area. Uh, we operate and our providers integrated to the platform operates worldwide. So. Um, in most cases, you will have the imagery there, but um, uh, if you didn't, uh, if you were not able to find the imagery and the platform, you're always welcome to contact us uh, to support at eos.com uh, and we will uh, we will be able to look by ourselves for the imagery. We will be able to contact the providers directly to uh, know if, if they have the imagery. And of course, if there was no archive imagery, you are able to um, order a tasking like if, if a capture of the image in future uh, for the specific area you need um, and uh, we can do it by ourselves via support at the moment and we are working on adding this feature to the platform uh, shortly so you will be able to order tasking for the area uh, through the platform as well and the uh, about uh, what you need to provide for assessment just your AOI so it's really simple, just your area of interest, the coordinates or like the, the file with the, um, with the area, it, it will work bo in both cases. Thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you. We have another question for Wu Hao. So I found EOS data, even the low res version, very useful to visualize forest clear cuts over time in my area. Living in a country where the logging lobby has a firm grip on public opinion, this could be a great opportunity to tell a different true story, pictures, and so not to lie. Any chance Greenpeace will be using this for the forest preservations as well? Wu Hao? Yes, uh, thanks a lot. That's also a very good question. Uh, of course, the Landsat and the, the Sentinel is quite useful for the forest monitoring, for the uh, logging monitoring. Actually, we have done, the Greenpeace has done <coughs> a lot of uh, forest monitoring based on these two uh, data source in a long time period. I think it's from 1990s. We have started doing that monitoring in, in Amazon, in uh, uh, in the Southeast Asia, also in the Northern Forest in uh, Russia and Canada. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of camping cases which based on this analysis before. For example, the uh, ash, uh, the, the, the ash and pump and paper, they just clear cut a lot of trees in the Southeast Asia and even in China. 
and uh, we use the solar image as the evidence to 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 uh, for the campaign, and uh, it's uh, reached some success. Uh, but I would like to say here is just like say uh, just like I said in the in the in the in, in the presentation, this process actually can only can be done by the professionals who have the academic background on remote sensing. But right now, with the uh, platform such as the Land Viewer, we can do it uh, by yourself with just simple operation and uh, a lot of time saving. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Hao. Great. Um, the next question, do you provide trainings for persons interested in learning how to develop such a technology? Well, it's a pretty vast question. So I think me or um, Victoria, who do you think could be better <laughs> to, to answer that? We do. Well, I, I will try to uh, start on this. Uh, maybe Victoria will help me uh, further on. So we do work, we do provide the trainings regarding the platforms that do we do have and how to use them. So for the land viewer, uh, it would be like Victoria. Um, yep. Would you like to jump in here? Yeah, sure, I can. Uh, yes, of course, we'll provide uh, the training sessions. You are welcome to, as already mentioned, this address to contact us uh, to support at eos.com. Uh, and our support managers, the, you, you should express that you would like to have a training session with our platform, and our support managers will gladly help you and guide you through the platform, uh, work with you on your particular cases, help you how you can tackle your issues through the platform yeah so just contact us via support at eos.com perfect thank you victoria um moving on for agriculture purpose it's nice to have a pass every 24 hours but with the cloud cover the data will probably not be available every 24 hours how do you deal with this and together with this are you using radar images for oh let me start with the first question so yes this is true um the clouds are uh, still and always can be an issue definitely it's possible that uh the imagery would not be you know, as uh, desirable as we want it, but there are several options on how we're dealing with that. So the first things first, it's um, inside of our, for example, crop monitoring platform, we do have the cloud masking. So basically it's the possibility to diminish the effect of the cloud on the image than to have the readiness uh, main down correct. So of course there is, let's say, a level of cloudiness that uh, our customers can consider as the appropriate and acceptable, acceptable for them. And also, what we're also trying to um, work on, uh, especially with the EOSAT, because the EOSAT is uh, compatible with um, Sentinel-2, for example. So there was um, a possibility and we're working on the ways how to extract the information, even though, for example, the cloud cover would be too high. So it's called the golden standard of Sentinel. And that's basically the combination of the Sentinel image and the image from the EOSAT that will help to retrieve, for example, the readings of the vegetation indices. So we're working on that. Um, and we believe that uh, the future will be, uh, you know, like cloudless, at least uh, in the way how we can interpret the data. There's another one question. So are you using radar images for 24-24 monitoring due to cloud cover sometimes? I think um, maybe Victoria can help me with that one. Yeah, um, sure. Regarding the, the radar images, we do have uh, like the Sentinel-1 on the platform and we have showed some use cases using the Sentinel-1 um, data uh, at the moment we do not have uh, the high resolution radar data as we didn't have uh, many requests for that but if you are interested you are welcome to to contact us uh, and we will be uh, we will check what we can do for you because we uh, partner with a lot of providers and maybe we will be able to get the imagery for your particular use case the sari imagery i mean but uh, if we will have more requests for the sari imagery we will be we will gladly add it to our platform 
Perfect. Thank you, Victoria. Um, and uh, I think one of the last, maybe the last one, how can our secondary school partner with EOS? I think Viera can help with this question. Yeah, hi. If you're uh, referring to our academic outreach program, uh, you can apply if you're a university, if you're a student, NGO, or a scientist. Uh, I'll send the link out here. This is the detailed program of our academic outreach program. You can see it in our chat, but if you have something else in mind uh, and uh, you want to partner in different way, please uh, reach out to PR at AOSDA.com and call for Vera. Uh, I will gladly discuss it with you in details. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Vera. Oh, a bit more of the question still. So uh, does your platform provide data for water quality monitoring? Um, I'm going to start uh, with some part of that. I think maybe then also Victoria can help me. Uh, so um, depends on the parameters that you are trying to trace because the water quality can be a rather, let's say, vast in terms of the uh, parameters. But we do work with um, water. So one of the examples was actually uh, provided by Victoria during the presentation about the lake. But that's about the visualization. But what else is also available, for example, in our crop monitoring platform, we're working with um, such approach as the soil moisture. So we can understand the quantity of water inside of the land. So once again, depending a lot on what is the, let's say, final scope and the parameters that you're trying to monitor. Maybe Victoria can um, help me a bit more with the details. Actually, you gave the perfect explanation. <laughs> yeah, I can add from my side that we have uh, several bands which can be used for, for example, distinguishing the land and water, um, the, um, the ice. Uh, if you, for example, need to monitor, you would like to monitor the glacier melting, um, you can use the uh, the bands I already mentioned, and you're, you're also able to add your specific bands you would like to use for monitoring uh, the specific condition, as uh, Lydia mentioned, the specific condition, what you need from the, uh, from the monitor, what information you want to get. You are able to uh, add the custom bands or the custom index uh, if you would like to use it specifically for monitoring the water. Yeah, so it's uh, the platform is really flexible in terms of it. Perfect. Thank you, Victoria. And uh, don't leave me because there is another question. I think it's waiting for you. So do we have the access to LIDAR data? I'm returning. Yeah, uh, regarding the LIDAR data, no, we don't have the LIDAR data at the at the, uh, on the platform um, at the moment. Um, as LIDAR is quite a different thing uh, apart from the satellite, we are concentrated on the satellites on the platform uh, and LIDAR, LIDAR data is usually ordered for a specific area for like a specific um, at a specific time, if you need to assess something using LIDAR, and it's really, really expensive, I would say. So we are concentrated on the satellites, which are um, more Mm, more suitable for most of the cases, I would say, and uh, much cheaper if we're talking um, about the publicly available data, it's actually free, and we're talking about the high resolutions, it will be still um, much, much cheaper uh, comparing to LIDAR data. And it's not tied to you, to the specific location. So the satellites is covering the whole Earth, and like the LIDAR data is usually ordered for a specific area. And we try to be uh, the more the most flexible we could. Perfect, Victoria. Thank you so much. I think that in here the list of the question finishes. So thank you so much for actively participating as well in the discussion. Um, once again, it was a pleasure and an honor. Uh, to have you, everyone on board. I would like everyone to say maybe uh, the final goodbyes. And uh, we are uh, thanking you for your attention. You can contact us. We are very open for communication, for collaboration, and let's work together on making this world a better place. Guys, can you also say something? Yeah, I wanted... I wanted... Agree. 
Thank uh-huh. you. Vera, Vera. <laughs> Do you want to add something? No, that to it? Idea said everything. Let's uh, let's work together and let's try to make it, this world a better place. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all guys for taking your time for participating uh, t- for your activity during the webinar at the moment. And from my perspective as a product manager of Landviewer, I wanted to say that if you have some requests, if you have some specific needs that you would like to cover with the satellite imagery, or if you don't know if you can cover it with the satellite imagery, please contact us. We are really willing to help you. And uh, if we, as I already said, that uh, the more requests we have for specific features or for specific data, the more likely that we will add it to the platform. If it's not on the platform, we can offer custom solutions. Yes, so contact us and we will find a way to help you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.